Well folks, welcome back to the workshop. Today we have, by the looks of it, some Dewalt tools in for a pair. Look at that for a box modification. I wonder what's inside of this. Looks like we're going to have a long video. Yeah, maybe not that long. What have we got? Dewalt SDS. This is a 253 older version. Dewalt nail gun roofing. Dewalt drill. And just to mix it up, Makita drill. This is only the 458 or 482, sorry, the cheaper one. And then as well. Just to really mix it up, either a Fina or an Ebenstock mixing drill. Not sure which, we'll not know till we get under. Obviously, the change lever is missing on it anyway. Right, let's see what we can do with this lot. Okay, we'll start with hopefully a simple one. These DHP 42 drills. They're only a cheap and cheerful Makita drill. They're the second smallest model they actually do. So these are generally either a cheap and cheerful fix or no fix. Now this one is going to be a switch. No, set of brushes. If you plug a machine in or a brushed cordless machine like that plug it on it doesn't work but if you give the motor a bit of a slap and she all of a sudden sparks into life it's always the brushes as you can see there them brushes are worn out if you look at the armature see this one here especially there's a wee gap so they're worn down too much now the brush is no longer making contact with the armature. So whenever you run it and she stops working, it's actually broken contact. Whenever you give it a slap, that brush just moves down ever so slightly, just enough to make enough contact again to allow it to run for a little bit. But once she goes around a few times, she generally stops. So that there, just a quick set of brushes should get this running, which is fairly lucky because most people burn these wee drills out like I say they're cheap so generally they're not worth repairing when things start going wrong they're actually that cheap now at the minute the actual switch for them to buy on its own probably costs more than the drill itself change them One set of CB440 brushes. If you have to order them online, sometimes you have to go by that longer number. 1944-27-5. That's the actual Makita number. Generally, CB440 will get you. And just drop in. You just pop the spring back down on top. Drop them on, fold the lid down, and that should be a nice, wee, quick, and easy fix. Sir, one Makita DHP 42 with a set of brushes. Now, on to the next. This is the Dewalt DCH 253, the older brushed SDS drill. I'm 
Is that the problem? No. That's hammer on and she's running. So what's the problem? She's holding the butt. She's changing modes. Oh, it's definitely hammering. The question is, what's wrong? I do hate it when people send in machines and don't actually give any reason as to why they're sending it in. So, we'll check for the common fault. Like I say, this is the brushed version. Generally, people use them and use them way too long and hard. And overheat the motor and end up burning the leads. Be a common problem with them. So we'll open it up and check the leads first. No, they don't look bad. Right, ring the customer. Right, he says the motor's running, it's just losing power. He's not sure if it's losing power in the motor or losing power in the hammer. He says it does run, runs fine, it's just when you're going through a concrete wall, it just seems to be getting weaker and weaker and weaker. So the motor looks good, he's not sure himself about the motor. You would know if the motor's losing power, it'll sound different. This one looks good, the brush is alright and the leads are okay. We'll guess and say the motor's alright. So we'll go into the hammer section instead. See if there's anything we can do there. These are just wee clamps for holding the lead on. Keep it on snug. To pull them out to get your lead out. No, it has the motor. Brushes are burnt away. Or more so overheated and cracked. So they've cracked and expanded, so they're not going to be moving on the holders anymore. So it's actually the brushes that's the problem. Hopefully it's the brushes. There's nothing wrong with the armature itself. She does sound okay, mind you. Okay, why do we clean out? We'll clean that down as well. Like I was saying, like the last one, stopping, the machine stopping, having to hit it to get it running. There could also be a problem when you're doing a machine, you get it in and it's working. Them brushes are gone. Probably stopped and ham and kept dying on them when he was using it because they're actually cracked. Way they are that been transported on here to me in the back of a van rolling around banging about inside that big black box 
them brushes start to vibrate and the holders come down a little bit my contact whenever I test the machine then sounds perfect sounds like there's nothing wrong because I'm getting it making full contact with the brushes but if you continue using it for five or ten minutes then brushes will quickly wear away again and start dying down in power because they're not actually able to move down but because it's transported onto me they've moved on and I get the full power and it sounds perfect so it's just something to bear in mind if you are doing repairs if you get it on and it sounds good don't just assume it's the motor like I was doing sometimes it can still be the motor it's just a simple problem like a set of brushes that should solve the problem everything else looks okay piston is still free enough tight mind you She's just starting to get a bit dry though. There's not much oil there. So we'll put a bit of fresh grease in that as well. Just to top it up. Make sure it doesn't dry out. And we'll give these a clean down. So that should be the only part we need. One Dewalt brush plate. N384037 if you're never needing one. This is the one with the straight contacts so for the normal Dewalt drills. The older brush versions, they'll have the exact same brush ring, but the actual contacts will be sitting at an angle. Get your armature on. Fit your brush plate. Don't forget this little grommet for the bearing just drop it on just sits in there as soon as we have it out and opened I'll just put a bit of fresh grease on make sure she doesn't go dry put some on there get some in here don't fill the whole thing but if you do put in too much it will just work its way out again anyway see it's got plenty of compression still actually nothing wrong with it it's just starting to go dry so that actually went at the right time so otherwise that would have been left too long it would end up going dry and destroying either the piston or the striker. Just a little bit of extra stuff down in there. That's pushed down on the place. Hopefully, do the trick. Just as you're putting them spade connectors back on again. Just make sure they're tight. If they go on very slack, just give them a wee squeeze with the pliers to tighten them up a little bit. The ones are actually quite tight. So they should be alright.
should hopefully be that one sorted. That's it. One Dewalt cordless SDS drill, 253. Losing power, just needed a new brush spring. 20 euro part, gets her up and running again. Now, on to the next one. This is the Dewalt First Fix nail gun. DCN 692. And this is a Type 2. She's obviously a brave age. Quite a bit of rust on the top of her. What a start now. Anyway. And it does actually have a note not firing. Let's see what she does here. Click, click. Right, she's running and she's shooting sometimes, but other times she's just clicking instead of firing. So that could be either the axis and side could be worn out, needs to be replaced. Could be the driver, but generally the axis will be replaced before the driver unit. Or it could be as simple as a pair of broken springs. Not gonna know till we first get in there. It's not the springs anyway. They're okay. A wee bit of rust as well on that driver unit. As you can see, the pin itself isn't all that badly worn. A little bit of wear up here, barely any down here. So the driver and springs are okay. That just leaves the axis inside. Watch your fingies on that spring. That is tight, and if it catches it, you'll know about it. Take the magazine off just for handiness. Just slice that label so we can open the cover. And that one too, actually. Sometimes little springs on the side this one and this one these are actually lefts and rights you have to buy each one individually sometimes they can rust or become weak so if this is very weak and not really even sprung back very strong it could just be the springs gone so if you see rust on them change them before you change the axis this one here it's definitely tight enough Everything else looks all right. A little bit of rust on it. Not too major. Right, chance this.
smacking off them leads. Give you room to take this off. Pulls back and then drops out. Generally they're quite stuff. Drop it out and give it a wee tossed onto its side. Get it past that bracket. And they get the solenoid out because this black piece doesn't come with the axis. Rise up them ages. Pull the solenoid out. There's two little catches here and here. The solenoid drops onto. So that's what you need to change. That's the axis. Whatever it is about, about this. Once it wears out so much, it's just not getting enough downward force to press the driver onto the flywheel. It's just not getting enough friction to drive the pin. So you'll notice it in your gun. Every now and again you'll start here clicking instead of firing. It starts doing it a little bit, then it keeps getting more and more and more. After a bit of time, the gun will do nothing but just click instead of shooting. That's the part you need to replace. The axis on top. That's the part you need. That's the number. Now, it comes as the whole unit. These wee springs are all attached. And as well, two new countersunk screws, which for some reason don't even come with Loctite. So put a little bit of Loctite onto them as well. Just get rid of the old ones. Now, generally when I'm doing this, that's it. I'll just fit the axis straight on, and that's it. Straight swap. But this one, it's fairly grubby on the inside. Generally a bit of dirt, it's not going to matter. But if there's carbon built up or worn steel on top of it, with carbon on it, that can create a lubricant that can interfere with your flywheel and driver unit. It'll make less friction so it won't drive as well. Any oil or grease is going to destroy it. So with that much stuff in it, I might just give this a wee clean out as well. Generally you don't have to, but if there's that much in it, probably better to. Just in case, now that we have it opened up anyway. Mind you, it's only the case I'm doing, nothing else. Now, that should sort us out. We just give us a wee blow down with the compressor as well. Now, that should be us. First thing, put your spring on your plunger. And line up solenoid. You have to get the plunger lined up to the hole. Get that on first. And then push your solenoid on the whole way. And the front bits locate up under here. Lift up the back, slide it forward. It can be we get a bit finickety to get that on. A wee bit of wiggling and jiggling. It will eventually go on. Clip your wires back down, keep them out of the way. And that should be just about it. Just a little leaf spring down in there. That's just for your switch, the detent for your switch. We're changing mode between bump and single shot. And 
and drop your switch lever onto your switch. Line them up. Drop them on. Drop your top cover back on. Again, watch the fingies. That should be her sorted. Take her out and give her a wee test. That's her. One Dewalt nail gun up and running again. She's firing now instead of clicking. So that's generally the part you're going to have to replace if your gun won't shoot. The axis up on top. Or what do they call it? The activator. Activator service. Change that. And that'll get you up and running again. Now, next up. There's a little Dewalt drill. Imagine this is going to be a chuck. Going with a stid of that. No. It's working. And it's not too badly worn out. Somebody's been on it before, mind you. It's been opened. What's wrong with us? Now there we go. Stuck in hammer mode. So that's hammer. That's normal chuck or drill mode. It still has a hammer function. So that gearbox is melted and jammed the hammer mechanism forward. So it's always always engaged. <laughs> Common one for these small Dewalts. So no model left on her. The badge is gone, but she's a DCD 796. There's the problem there. Look, stuck on hammer mode. That's what my had actually said. So these wee 796 drills, they are actually quite good. They're a brushless motor on them. They're not expensive to buy. You can buy them for less than 100 euro. Very good drill, but that's the one main complaint I have with them. Plastic gearbox, these would be so much better if they took away the hammer mode. Use them as hammer mode, get up to masonry, just melts the gearbox. An actual hammer ring inside just binds forward and won't go back again so it's constantly in hammer mode. Good drill, apart from that. If you have one, just never use it in hammer mode. And Dewalt, make it better, take out the hammer action completely, just make it a drill driver instead of a combi drill. Right, Fix it, you can replace the gearbox housing, 
press that, we need to remove the chuck. The question is do I keep the chuck or do I replace it? It's not great looking, but it still functions, so we might keep it. Right. Let's see if we can get it fixed without costing a fortune. First thing, get onto it, get the gearbox open, get the spindle locked up to remove the chuck because we need to get the chuck off to get onto this end here to actually change the plastic gearbox housing so we have to remove the whole clutch assembly to get onto this here but you need to do a full strip down job on this thing What is she? 2017 so she's nearly seven years of work done. That one's also missing. No, maybe this hasn't been opened before. The label's not been cut. Now this looks like it's had a fairly rough life. With the frost in that stator. Still, shouldn't matter, she's still running. We'll try to fix it, keep the chuck to keep the cost down. We'll see if we have to replace this housing. It's not the most expensive thing in the world, but if I replace the housing, it's going to add to the cost. Sometimes you can just free it out. First of all, I'm just going to give it a quick clean. Just take this off first because we will need to go into here when we're rebuilding it. Now, we have a spindle, we can lock that to torque off the chuck. What I'm going to use to do that is this part here, taken off a broken machine, pressed into a 13 mil deep unpack socket. So that'll slide onto the spindle perfectly and give you something to grip. Stick that in the vise now, clamp on the allen key, and you can torque off the chuck from the spindle. There we go. If you weren't as concerned about cost, you were just going to replace the chuck anyway. Instead of dismantling all this, you could just cut the chuck off. Actually just slice it down around there. Should be chopping through some of the spindle. As you can see the top of it, it's just the spindle. There's nothing actually there. There's no screw or anything in this. Even if you get a little bit of the threads, it doesn't really matter. Chopping it down around here. Will be roughly about there. Slice through it, that breaks off the chuck, and the remainder of the chuck then you just cut down through the side, down through one side of the thread, just to the end of the thread, that breaks the clamp, you can just knock it off then. So it'll just leave you with this end here. 
So you can dismantle this clutch assembly to get in to see what the problem is. If it's just a bit of melted plastic, you can remove it. But otherwise, same dismantling job to replace the actual clutch housing. That's her off. Hopefully that'll be okay to reuse. Inside here then. Three torques. That all comes out together. Give it a wee clean as well. There's your spring, your gear, and your hammer action gear there, which is basically a rattle, not hammer action. And there's where she's binded up. Maybe not. Thought that was melted. Actually, just grease and dirt. So that's your hammer action. Then, once this spins around so much, it engages this little lever. It lifts up that gear down in there. When that gear is lifted up, it starts engaging on this gear here. Sometimes what can happen is this actual gear can move. If you push back the bearing. This gear should be sitting up tight against that shaft, which it is. So it's not the gear. If you're going to do a cheap fix and just get hammer gone, you could just remove that gear. Or remove this one or grind them down flat. Sometimes, like this, it can just be dirt. Let's throw it apart and see what's going on here. So, there's just your tension spring keeping this pulled back when it's not engaged. Washer, spring, that's your hammer gear. That's the lever for engaging and disengaging it. That housing looks fine. I wonder if this is just dirty. Right, a chance of cleaning these parts out. Put a wee spot of grease on them, put them back together again. Right, this looks absolutely fine. No damage to that at all. If it was melted, you'd know. Because these parts here will be melted onto it. Even if it wasn't all that bad, you'd still see damage on the plastic. So that's okay. But imagine dirt, grit, and rust has just built up underneath and kept one of these components lifted up. This here is what holds the hammer. That's sitting in there. Whenever you engage your actual hammer action, this twists around and lifts up that gear. So I would imagine dirt has actually just gotten onto these wee valleys and packed it out. Hopefully that's all it is because if I'm wrong, I have to strut this down again.
that's your actual clutch spring in here the springs which stops these pins going all the way through and the spring nut on top so it puts the tension onto the springs to give your clutch different strengths that on first that gear in. Just got a bit of grease down there. A bit on the needle bearing too. Don't go mad with the grease. And then make sure you put this in the correct orientation. Should go up and down no problem. This spring helping to pull back the lever and you have this spring on top helping to push down the gear now again we have to match these up these three holes and these three bars here they're not evenly spaced see these two are closer together this one's further apart you've got a big square here as well it lines up to there they have to go on the right way around. And then your sleeve then itself. Ridges on the inside. It line up to the ridges on the outside here. So they only go on one way. So you can see how that mechanism works. The sleeve. Is just turning this nut, plastic nut, giving you different strengths for your clutch. And once you get to the top, then this little arm comes across and engages your hammer action. Wrong way around. The flat goes to the bottom and the round goes to the top. A little bit of grease in just to hold these pans in place. You can install this in one go. Five of them all together. Just rotate it to line up the spindle and drop them on. go ahead and put everything else back together again. Actual clutch gear first and your steel plate. And this will be the plate for actually locking your second gear. Another reason why this is actually a decent drill. One of the cheaper drills 
this plate here is just part of the plastic housing. These teeth are normally just plastic in the cheaper drills, most brands. There's cheap Dewalt, metal gears, so there's no chance of stripping out the gears. Let wash this out so we will put a little bit of grease under this. That should be it, we hope. Just blow this out with a compressor. There's not much point in doing too much with it. It's an old drill, it's done quite a bit of work. So I wouldn't want to go stripping it down just to clean out the motor. It's not really going to give you any benefit. At the end of the day, it's going to be used again and it's going to get dirty fairly quickly again. further make sure it's out of hammer mode nice one that'll do nicely just make sure before we put the chuck back on again well, there is no screw on this thing to ensure it doesn't come off again I'm gonna put on a Loctite Just to slap it on good and tight. On Dewalt drill. Out of hammer mode. Just the amount of work and dirt that's actually got onto it. Packed out the mechanism. Quick clean out, a little bit of grease, rebuilt it, and that's her up and running again. If you actually needed to change this housing, that's the part you'd actually need there. Costs about 14 or 15 euro. It comes as that whole kit with the bearing on it. There's extra cost to actually fit it onto it, and if you also need to chuck then, generally it might not be worth doing because you can buy these for so cheap now. 
that's that one fixed anyway. Now, last of this lot is the mix and drill. And I've done a little bit of digging to see what it is. I don't mean research online or ringing the customer, I mean literal digging. I actually sort of digging the nameplate to see if you can see the brand. Looks like an Alfra. But Alfra, Ebenstock, Refina, they're all basically the same type of machine. This is the smaller model anyway, it's not the big one. I was saying the chain lever's missing on it. Don't know if that's the problem or not. See if she works here first. No. No, it's not doing anything actually. Right, see what we can do with us. Need to get her up and running first. She turns at least. Right, we'll get the paddle of it first. Make it a bit handier to work with. That to one side. We'll just work on this. First up, more digging. Free up the screws. I know this one may not look the best, but it's actually quite clean. Normally come on much worse than this. Bit stuff, but they're moving. That one's a little rusted. First thing's the brushes. So even if it isn't the brushes, generally they get very badly gummed up with plaster dust and cement. So you just give them a wee check and give them a wee clean. Make sure they're moving free. So no matter what, you're going to have to do it anyway. That's better. Do this side too and give it another test. Still nothing. Next, we'll check the switch and the lead. Change the lead and used a three core. Just doesn't need the earth. And you can see we've got a rust on these leads as well. That's a mix and drill. They generally will get wet at some stage. It's looking like a switch. Dead. Neutral should be alright. It is actually wired up direct. Right, first off, we need a switch. Right, so the lead looks okay. We'll test it before we do anything else.
yeah that's okay just change the switch one switch now to change it the leads for your motor these leads just press on and they're sitting against a little spring down here a wedge whenever it goes on it catches on the wedge and it can't pull back out again because it's at an angle take it out get yourself a wee pointy there's just an old screwdriver stick it on end it up and they just come straight out same in this one the actual capacitor here noise suppression capacitor is held in the same way as well as your neutral lead but the wee spring is just here just the next hole over from the lead put that on pull out the lead same over here that now them heads are fairly badly rusted so we're just going to use a nice fresh butt save stropping it out get rid of that as well these leads we don't need the earth but we also don't need all this length I'll just get rid of some of that too The neutral is going up to these grips here of holes. So that's one for your capacitor and your motor lead. So they're all just connected onto this neutral. The neutral not doing any switching. The only switching is actually the lathe, which goes up here on its own, right at the very end. The other terminal for the motor is over here. then is just plug and play they literally just plug in once they go on they don't come out one on there one down here and your capacitor as well stick that on one there one there work We're not so bad Right, 
question is, can we do anything with this? Go to the dirt first. Right, it's not shifting. We're going to have to go into the gearbox too. Which means more digging. to go on to the motor section. I only want to go into the gearbox. That shouldn't have come out so easily. No, that's right. Oh, everything seems tidy enough. Clean on the inside. I need to get this out. Move on. It's a violent way of doing it, but there's not much you can do. It has to come out. There we go. We got a clean down. I learn that little damage I put onto it. I'll make sure the thread's still good as well. The housing, we're gonna have to clean out. Not the grease, leave all this alone. Just the housing for that spindle. I'll get some sandpaper down in there. And get inside of here, cleaned out so that moves up and down freely. Much better. That spindle sits down there. A little bit of grease on this. That slides down. Lift up your gear. Slide that onto it. So when it's the lever itself, raising and lowering this gear, that actually gives you your high and low speed. And if this isn't moving free enough, the actual change lever for sliding up and down is going to be under too much strain. Because the lever itself is only plastic. So to actually fix it, that's the part you need. So to find a part that's the part number there, and they only cost about six euro plus to that. Comes a little kit. That's your spring, your screw, sleeve, and your change lever. All you have to do to fit it, take off that little washer, drop the whole thing down in there, and take your spring, drop that on. That's it ready to go. So all that's doing. Look at the profile of it. It's narrower up here, which is fatter at the top. Two wee slots cut out. 
So that drops in. In your gearbox you have two larger holes, top and bottom, and a narrow channel. So you're pushing this down through the big hole. So it clears the narrow channel so it can slide up and down. Then when it gets to the other side, the spring lifts it up. And it's sitting on the big hole then so it can't move back down again. All you have to do to fit it, just push it on, tighten up your screw. That's it. The easiest way to, easiest way to fit it. Change that over again. That in there. And fit that in there too. Not necessary, but just makes it easier to put it together. Just put a bit of grease on there too for the drive gear. on this as well. I know they're caked up there but they're still tight enough. They're not slack. Just blow out this housing as well. Just a support screw for the handle. And that should be her. That's her. One Alpha Max syndrome. Cleaned up a wee bit. New switch put on, new change lever, and that's her up and running. That's her, up and running again. And they're Alphras or Eben stocks or Afinas. My opinion, one of the best mixing drills you can buy. Fantastic machines, great to use, very powerful, last ages, as you can see. Plus, they're very nice to work on. Very easy setup. Everything comes apart nice and handy. Nothing complicated about them. Gearbox gets very little bother. The gears don't really wear out all that much. The motor, you can get years of use out of it before it eventually burns out or you wear out the gear on it. Main thing you're changing, lead, brushes, bearings, change lever, switch. Probably switch is going to be the big, biggest thing because of the dust these things deal with. The dust eventually binds up the switch. But that's it. That's all you're really doing. Nothing really else goes wrong. I've only had a few of the big ones burn out a motor. Never really can see gear problems on them. These smaller ones, you'd see the motor burn out more often because boys are using it for the wrong job. Well, that's it folks. Another box of tools fixed up again. And this time, everything's actually fixed up in it. Not often that happens. Normally there's one or two that's not worth fixing. But everything this time's fixed. Two cheap drills, one Dewalt, one Makita. Both with ch cheap, simple fixes. Dewalt SDS drill, new brush ring. Also a fairly cheap repair. Just more labour costs involved for actually stripping the whole thing down to get into it. But still, well worth doing. MD Walt SDS drills, you do see them in an awful lot, 
but they are probably one of the most popular drills. They do have a couple of failures on them, but you can still fix them up again. So in the long run, probably one of the better drills to be buying. And the Walt nail gun, obviously needing an axis as per usual. Generally, they're expensive to fix. Used to be the only option unless you wanted a gas gun. But now with the likes of Milwaukee and Hikoki guns, Hikoki being the better one, they're the better option now. Expensive to keep the Dewalt's going when the parts are so expensive to fit. But if you want to keep it running, you have to keep putting the money into it to keep it running. Most of the parts inside are wearable and consumable. They have to be replaced after so long. So you do get them in an awful lot more compared to any other gun apart from maybe a pass loader when it needs a regular service. But the main thing is they're all fixed and they all can be fixed. That's it folks. Thanks for watching. Give us a wee like and a follow if you're enjoying the videos. Hit the notification button as well if you want to be a, get a notification when they're posted. And if you want to, you can also become members now too to support the channel. Cheers. Thanks for watching.